We'll get to this later. We'll talk about the altcoins that happened this month. Um, but let's talk a little bit about what happened in the altcoins in 2017, because this is the year that we're coming into. Uh, glad that everyone's feeling uh, glad that everyone's feeling better now that the audio is fixed. Um, so let's look at 2017 and let's compare what happened in 2017 to what could happen in 2021 and understand timelines here, right? So let's, as we zoom in to the end of the year of 2016, we see that Bitcoin made this run up to all all time high, barely hit it. Uh, it made it, it made it close at the end of the year in 2016, but didn't quite get there. And it took till January, then it got rejected. Then it got all the way up there in March, and then it got rejected again below its previous all-time high. And then finally, in you know the end of April or, or in April here, it broke through and it never went back. So it took quite a while, a lot of teeter-tottering here around previous all-time high above and below before we got true breakouts. And in that time, you know, the big altcoins did not move very much. We are going to see here on the XRP chart, if we go back uh, to 2017, you can see that, you know, from the beginning of 2017 uh, through the sort of middle of 2017, we're seeing here's, here's the XRP chart. And yeah, it moves a little, but you can see back in the end of 2016, it was like around 300 bucks. And look, it kind of goes even down into 2021. It's down to like 230 by March of 2017. And this is as Bitcoin's making new highs. And so you have to understand that even in XRP, which went on to do a thousand X, took a while to get its feet and its legs under it. And that's going to be something that I think you guys just need to understand is that when these big altcoin movements happen, they kind of happen suddenly. Like, look, XRP takes off from, you know, a... Uh, uh, what is it here? Like a two hundred and thirty million dollar market cap. I'm sorry, sorry for the price. I, I, I'm I'm looking at market cap right now. Ignore the last five minutes there of of talking about XRP's price. Obviously, it was in the pen. It was in the fractions of a penny here. You can see it's at like two hundred million dollar market cap, three hundred million dollar market cap. It even goes down before it just makes these you know phenomenal moves up to now it goes from two hundred million dollars all the way up and it peaks up here at two billion and then comes down peaks up again to 2 billion, levels off in bull flags, and then it makes another move up to 7 billion, another move up to 15 billion. And this happens into the mid-year, right? Remember that Bitcoin didn't really fully get its legs until almost the end of April. But then when we got that decisive, I'm never coming back to this price level uh, type of action out of Bitcoin, as you see, remember, it got thrown back down under previous all-time high here as late as March of 2017, and then it moved on. And so we're seeing that once it moved on, that that's when you started seeing uh, this real crazy price action out of the altcoins, the bigger altcoins, right? So if you're looking for when those huge, huge momentum moves are going to happen, I believe that there's going to be some up and down battles. Maybe we make it to 20K on Bitcoin, uh, 25K, 27K, and then maybe we get rejected down to 18K. I'm not sure what the story is going to be, but throughout the next sort of first quarter or two, I'm expecting that we are going to have sort of continuous tug of war on the Bitcoin chart. Maybe it won't be as dramatic as it was in 2016. We're already seeing Seeing a you know much smoother uh, type of pullback happening here in 2020. I mean, this is our big dump was 17%, and then it got bought up within you know what was it hours. And so if this is the kind of dumpage that we're having in this new type of bull run, again, this is speaks about the sort of smoothness of this next bull run. So we might not have as much tug of war, but once we find that we've hit new all time high and it feels as though the market has left those price levels permanently, that's when we can probably start seeing a much more decisive and ridiculous almost uh, action out of the altcoins. So just using historical comparables of XRP, remembering that what is about a $200 million a mid um, sort of upper, uh, I guess it's a large cap, right? It's not in the billions, right? We have coins that are in the billions, but looking at coins and, you know, if you were to ask me, payments and stuff like that was a really hot button. It still is, but payments was a real sort of hot button topic of the 2017 run, whereas this time it's all about finance and DeFi. And looking at what's around $200 million, you see like an Aave, you see, you know, maybe uh, just the core DeFi protocols, um, maybe it's synthetics, maybe there's, you know, uh, who knows, maybe all of these coins will get their runs. But seeing things like, uh, where's Compound on this list? Is it, is it dropped? Yeah, Compound's down here. Oh, it's, it's a lot smaller than I thought. Oh, wait, no. Okay, sorry. I was looking at volume. Sorry. Compound's at 588. Um, Aves at nearly a billion. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, so maybe even uh, these are going to get their 
multiple hundreds of X's or thousands of X's. It's really hard to say, right? But I'd imagine that the trending narratives are going to be extremely powerful. Pardon my faux pas there of using the volume instead of the market cap. But the point is that when you can expect for these things to really powerfully move, in my opinion, is going to depend on when Bitcoin says a permanent goodbye. Is it still double audio? It's not still double audio, right? No, it's not. Can't be. Okay, cool. Um, and so th the, the point is that uh, I hope the audio is fixed, by the way. Confirm for me, guys, if it's, if it's all good on audio. Um, is that once Bitcoin says permanently goodbye to these price levels is when we can expect for things to truly, truly go bananas. When we can see those types of 2017 uh, gains where people really had, I, I think, a, a thousand X gains, multiple hundred X gains. Those are the types of things that really change a person's financial situation, right? And even if you just had a thousand dollars, even if you just had a hundred dollars, right? If you're the type of person where a hundred dollars is a lot of money for you and you get a thousand X gains, well, having $100,000, I would imagine, would be pretty significant. If you had $1,000, that would make you a millionaire. Those numbers are pretty mind-boggling. But if this is to repeat history, and I certainly hope, and I've been working for the last several years at creating content because I believe genuinely that we have a significant shot at it, that that is something that we can look forward to, right? And so if this is to happen, I believe it'll happen when Bitcoin says goodbye to the $20,000 range. And that could take as long as, you know, like I said, I believe we're going to break uh, the, the new all-time high, just like we did here in February uh, or January. See, we first touched uh, the previous all-time high, but we got rejected. And then we broke through it for the first real time where we had closes above it at the end of February. And that's why I'm sort of predicting, you know, we're a little bit ahead of schedule, right? This moment uh, was in January last time. Now we're having this moment in December. So we're a little bit like a month ahead of schedule. So maybe this moment where we go up and we really uh, first break through and get rejected or when we break through more decisively rather is happening in January of this coming year. Um, but then there was yet another rejection down. So remember, even if this happens in January and we get another tumble down, know that this is part of a series of events that I believe leads to, like we see here, the first time where we really say goodbye. And we say goodbye to the $1,100 price range right here at the beginning of April. And it sort of, you know, it goes back and forth around this, uh, this uh, price point. And then we say goodbye by the time we're in May. And that's when things get absolutely bonkers, right? And that's when we see the movement in the industry get absolutely parabolic. And so understand that all of this is part of the story of Bitcoin breaking free. And once Bitcoin breaks free, as we've seen the powerful sort of underlying current that happens for the widespread crypto markets is, is really transformative, right? 100 times 100 is 10,000, not 100,000. No, I said 100 times 1,000, uh, Richard Fryfield. I said 1,000x gains, bud. So if you get 1,000, by, by the way, guys, uh, XRP, the reason why I'm saying that, uh, XRP is absolutely did 1,000x, right? Let's look, at the, let's look at the price back in, back in the previous bull run here. And you had prices back here at... Uh, From the bear markets, you had prices back here at, you know, fractions of a penny here, you know, and so you get it uh, running all the way up to, you know, what was it, $4 at the peak, something like that. So you had, a, or I guess 340, but I think it peaked at above $4. I think this is showing closes, not wicks, because it definitely peaked at above four, four bucks on certain exchanges. Um, and so if you get, if you think about it as one penny to four bucks is a 400 X and then you have, you know, down, it was like, you know, fractions of a penny 0 0.3, 0 0.5, uh, cents, depending on the, on this bear market, right? You get a pretty much a thousand X out of, out of ripple XRP. Um, but the point is not whether it did exactly a thousand X or an 800 or a 900 X. The point is that it went from you know, an already ridiculous market cap of hundreds of millions up to hundreds of billions, right? The market cap, if you look here, uh, it peaked up here in 2018 at, you know, 131 billion, 131 billion. Pretty crazy, right? And so 
Does it make sense? Is it justified? I'm not going to make that argument. I don't care about whether it is, whether it should or shouldn't be. That's not what we're here to say, what it should or shouldn't be. What we're here to say is what it is. And so that's why I try to break down this stuff to you because these numbers don't always, uh, to a lot of people, they seem like fantasy land, uh, but they do happen. And it happens when Bitcoin starts really breaking free. And so in my opinion, as we break three, uh, as we break free from the 20K range, I believe it'll be a lot of topsy-turviness and take a few months uh, before we're truly saying goodbye buy to 20k forever. Um, but once that happens, we can expect that the major alts will probably start to move tremendously, right? Um, RSR is definitely not a scam, correct? What are my thoughts on Ohm? I don't hear much buzz about uh, the other others in the dot ecosystem. It seems really undervalued. Yeah, I think the dot ecosystem is just recovering because it had such a parabolic move, but I still see a lot of uh, movement in the dot ecosystem. Wazex, Steve Wozniak, uh, coin on Uniswap now, maybe speculate Coinbase and Binance soon. Uh, so yeah, I haven't done a super deep dive into Wazex, um, but you guys know me. I don't like always, I don't always go into coins that have done or, or start at such a big market cap starting at, you know, 66 million. Let's see where it started. I think it peaked up at like, yeah, like 73 million. Oh wait, no, let me zoom out a little bit. Um, yeah, it peaked up. I think it wicked up above 90 million at one point. At any point, uh, looks good. Obviously, it's the Waz. He's a legend. Uh, do I think that what they're doing, you know, is just diving into F-Force uh, really quickly, energy efficiency reinvented. Um, and so we're talking about a revolutionary platform aiming at increasing energy efficiency by allowing everyone to participate and benefit from a worldwide energy efficiency projects, right? And so, you know, we're talking about energy web, we're talking about several different sort of renewable energy projects. And this has been something that's been talked about a lot. It seems like Energy Web is kind of positioned well in this. Um, it seems like this project is definitely like focusing a lot on Steve Wozniak's name. I haven't done a tremendous amount of looking under the hood here. Uh, however, you know, I, I, de I definitely try to kind of sometimes steer away from things that are this obvious uh, because it seems like a lot of people, you know, it seems like it's already fairly big. It seems like it's got a big mission. It seems like it's already uh, got a high valuation. And so usually with these types of things, I tend to sort of just like with like Filecoin and the other stuff, I tend to just sort of wait and see on the sidelines and focus on things where I understand the variables a little better. I hope everyone in F-Force and WazX makes a ton of money. And, you know, shout out to the Waz for pushing the crypto narrative. Um, but I don't think necessarily Steve Wozniak is going to be some sort of uh, kingmaker for uh, a crypto per se, right? I think it's just, uh, you know, I think it's I think it's interesting, but n nothing is making me FOMO um, per se. Have you still got the spark to sell XRP now? I don't know what that means. Have you heard about Legacy Network? I'm going to get to some Q&A in a little bit. Yeah, Bondly. I wanted to go over Bondly, right? And so this is kind of something that happened a lot. I shifted my focus in the last couple of months to covering projects before they come out and helping you guys get ahead of projects. And there's a sort of double-edged sword with that because the reality is, is that a lot of these projects, if they're overhyped, the reality is that they will unfortunately be subject to certain types of manipulation right off the bat. And I'll let you know exactly what I'm talking about. Message un unveiling event for Origin Trail. You guys know I love Origin Trail and supply chain cryptos. It's a great, great use of decentralized ledger technology. I'll go ahead and tune into that. Thank you for that Guinness stash. Um, 902 of you in the building. If you guys could all do me a favor and destroy that like button, it would really, really make my day. I appreciate it. It really helps this content reach more viewers. So look at looking at Bondly here, what happened. And by the way, they've done a phenomenal job with their launch. They launched at, you know, two and a half cents. And by the way, you guys know I love micro caps. And that was why I covered Bondly was in the context of a micro cap. Um, it's definitely not a micro cap. It's still, you know, small cap. I wouldn't even say it's ultra small cap at 10 million. It's kind of right on the, the boundary there of becoming a bigger coin. Um, but, you know, they, they performed really well and it's, they definitely had a nice push up here. They announced a Cardano partnership um, and they'll be doing, you know, Polkadot and Cardano. So, you know, really, uh, really out there on the new chains. Um, and they had, you know, a pump up to almost 20 cents. I think it, at one point it was like 19 cents here, um, which is almost, you know, it's at an 8x or something like that, an 8x from, from launch. Pretty impressive, pretty impressive stuff. Um, and so, you know, it's annoying because I wanted my community to be ready and to get in there at two and a half cents. That was what I wanted. Um, but it's hard when coins are really uh, hyped like this. They get a lot of like bots and people who just go in and initially snipe the the super low entries and pump it up. And then, you know, some people get end, end up, you know, thinking they're getting in early, but they've really missed that initial hype. 
Um, but you know, a project like Bondly's got a lot of different angles they're pushing, and I've been impressed with how well they're holding here in this sort of you know 15 cent range even today. Nice little pump, and so you know, my hope is that they continue to show value. Um, but I would say that they did an amazing performance right off the bat, though obviously I was hoping that my community would get in at two and a half cents. That was what I was hoping is that you guys would get in at two and a half cents, and that we would all be able to be laughing about this together. It seems like a bot got in there and sent this thing over a dime pretty quickly. But if you were able to snipe some entries around a you know ten cents or eleven cents, I, I saw some people in the chat saying they were able to do that. Congrats to you guys. You have some gains here, and hopefully the the bondly tech stacks up and and delivers all that it's promised um uh yeah exactly on uni you could not get bondly under 12 cents bro yep so you know that's the thing is is it got it got overhyped almost and that's a, almost its own issue right but if you look at uh if you look at uniland right which i talked about as well um i think that they're a good example of they had a ridiculous thing happen on day one. As you can see here, um, they actually have their all-time high is, a, is pretty much a dollar, right? 98.6 cents. Um, and if you look here, what happened is um, that was a price that, that happened even before this got listed on CoinGecko. As you can see, it was at 31 cents on CoinGecko. And that was another bot attack. Another bot attack hit Uniland. And so, you know, sometimes these bot attacks hit and they send the price up so so ridiculously dramatically and, and take up all the liquidity pool and then dump on all of the the sort of entries into the, uh, into the FOMO sort of moment of the project launch. And it's sort of hard, you know, I've been talking to a lot of people after this Bondly launch trying to understand what can be done to stop these bots, what can be done to prevent against this. And it's pretty hard on something like Uniswap to stop any wallet from participating. I mean, that's kind of the point, right? And so, you know, if you look at it, you know, throughout the most, the meat of the launch, right? If the meat of the next day or so after the launch, you saw Uniland kind of hover around this 20 to 20, 20 to 30 cents, right? Call it 20 to 30 cents here. And then it dipped. And then it dipped really significantly. And this was your kind of magic moment to enter. Um, I was really passionate about the project, so I kept covering it throughout this period. Um, but you know, obviously, if you got if you wait till after the hype subsides a little bit, you can snipe some entries if the project dips. Bondly has not dipped yet, um, but maybe that's coming, right? Maybe that's coming. If you guys were looking to get into Bondly and you couldn't, maybe this kind of a moment is coming. And then if a project's really strong, what you want to see is this. What you want to see is that the project. Um, gets that little, you know, the fade off from that extreme uh, FOMO moment and then overcomes it in not too distant of a time frame. And so that's really the goal of, of strong projects. Um, and it sort of lends uh, some credence to the idea of not putting all your cards on the table during launch and really waiting and kind of holding some stuff back until after launch so that you can really push up and over that launch moment and have things continually grow in a, in a more sustainable way. And you're looking at Uniland and they've just continually kind of pushed up here uh, and they're about to have their, their alpha launch, another project I like a lot, but they're both examples of those launch moments kind of being capitalized on by unfortunately opportunistic actors, a lot of bots, and that's just kind of the way it goes, right? And and it's hard to completely stop this stuff. But what I can do, what I can do is tell you guys what's going on and help you guys understand how to position yourself against these types of moves in the market or at least strategize around them because this is something that is kind of an age-old thing of people uh, you know going in uh, early and hard and then you know sort of trying to play these FOMO moments. Uh, these faux moments, if you will. And so I feel like this is something I kind of wanted to start talking about, which is when there's big and obvious FOMO uh, to sort of approach it with some strategy, right? Approach it with some caution is kind of the deal. Um, question, Elliot, Pokestarter is killing at any price target, your view. Um, yeah, so you guys know I've been covering Pokestarter uh, since they kind of hit they're definitely a hot topic. And the reason why they're hot right now is because they are about to have a launch for SpiderDAO, which is another Polkadot project. And it's another pro project, which I think I was probably the first person in the world to cover SpiderDAO um, because I was aware that, again, as a micro cap. But like I said, guys, it's probably gonna be 
another faux moment, right? There's going to be a faux moment here. And I don't know. It's hard to predict this stuff. It's hard to predict this stuff. You can't say for sure what the outcome is going to be. You can't, right? Um, and so uh, the reality is, is it's, <laughs> it's tough. When these projects launch with such micro caps, it's just like there's so many ways to, to sort of, uh, t there's so many people who are trying to get in low, they're trying to pump it up or whatever. Uh, Pokestarter kind of went almost too high at the beginning, pumping up to 90 cents. I mean, that was pretty crazy. Um, but look at them now. They're making their way back up there. I would say that their next point of resistance here, they have a big sort of resistance line here at about, what, well, probably around here it looks like. Um, where is this uh, peak here? It's about 56 cents. And so they're coming up to that now. Um, I wonder if there's going to be some psychological resistance there. We'll see. When coins are this this young, it's hard to say that there's any real meaningful technical analysis you can do, right? It's all so, so new. And that's what's exciting about them. That's what leads to ridiculously, uh, you know, I guess, elevated price targets. That's what leads to amazing gains and also some tragic losses. That's why this game is so fast-paced and what attracts a lot of people to the game. Um, and so will this bust up to the next peak of 70 cents or 90 cents? It's really hard to say because this initial launch was so hyped on Pokestarter. Um, but the, you see that they're delivering now with their first incubated or their first Polkadot uh, funding project um, through their through their polls sort of launch pad situation in SpiderDAO. So we'll see. Um, I'm imagining that there's going to be a faux moment as well. I'm going to keep using that because it seems like you guys like that. Uh best entry for spider doubt i don't know guys i really don't know i don't like i'm i need to take some time and evaluate and try to give a better strategy again not financial advice but just the best strategy possible for attacking these early plays i mean like you guys some of you guys are bringing up api3 right and api3 if you're looking had a similar opportunistic thing that happened where people scooped up uh, a sort of uh, exploiter scooped up all the entries under a dollar and then sold them off at a dollar um, or it went down to like 80 cents or something on the Mesa decks and then it hit, you know, a dollar was kind of the first entry instead of 30 cents um, because this guy did an exploit. Um, but if you were waiting for the dip on API 3, you know, good luck. Keep waiting, right? <laughs> Keep waiting because it looks like it's got a lot of strength here around the $2 mark, what it dipped down to like, what is it, 160 um, or whatever, you know, really quickly got up to 130. Will it never go back to a dollar? I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. But I'm just saying, if you're just saying guaranteed the launch, if it's overhyped, stay away. It's hard because look, if you if you were to still spring on this $1 target for, for API 3, you know, at one point you were sitting at almost a, what was it, a 280? I feel like it wicked up to like 280 or something. Um, I, I don't know. It's not, it's not showing that close of, of whatever that, uh, period is here on, on, uh, coin gecko, but here are two sixties. So you're sitting on 160% growth in a day or two, if you hopped on this dollar or so, uh, entry. And so it's really hard to predict these launches, especially when there's a lot of hype and there's a lot of fundamentals. Um, so I can't give you a perfect strategy. And, you know, obviously one thing I could do is just kind of stay away from projects before they launch. But I don't know. I don't think that that's putting you guys in the best position either. You know, my goal, it, my goal is on the fundamental level is to get you guys ahead of this market the best way I can to cover the best projects before anyone else does and put you in the driver's seat with knowledge. But again, it seems like the there's not a lot of let's just say it's pretty obvious that people are watching this channel and that people are reacting to this channel. So know that there are big wallets and there are opportunistic people that are watching this channel and they are with you, right? They're alongside you, right? And so um, it's it's kind of hard, right? Where, you know, it's the problem is uh, the, people are watching Elio Trades now and I don't know. I want to protect you guys. I know that you guys, the core community are the people I care about. I don't care about those opportunists. I don't want them to be able to take advantage of you or these moments, these faux moments, but that's just kind of the situation that we have. And so the game constantly changes. As you can tell, I need to constantly iterate and evaluate and update the way that I approach my content and my own investment strategy. And so that's just sort of uh, the moment we're in where, you know, we're seeing a lot of opportunism uh, on these launches. And it'll be interesting to see uh, what the best strategy is. But even when we find out a better strategy, I'm sure that as I update it, we'll have to constantly iterate because they'll, the opportunists will constantly try to catch up, right? They'll constantly try to catch up. 
So the best thing I can do is work hard, bring you good projects, and I can try to equip you with all the best tools, but I can't protect you from everything. So the best thing I can do is just call it like I see it and keep telling you when I when I observe phenomena in the market, like these overhyped launches, these these pump sort of bots, like that the ones that hit Bondly and sent it up to 33 cents, like the ones that hit Unilend and sent it up to a dollar right on launch. Those are definitely bots and those are definitely sort of attacks of some sort. Elliot, please read my super chat. Okay, I'm sorry if I miss some super chats, guys. Sometimes I get to ranting and I and I don't always <laughs> I don't always know what I'm uh, I don't always uh, pay attention to the chats. Let me scroll back up here. I don't see any chat. I don't see any chat. Um, let me switch over to the top chat. I've been doing live chat instead of top chat. All right, let me go back to the YouTube window and then I'll see if I can see it there. Um. Let's see. I don't see any super chats, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, let me switch over to the top chat. Man, I'm so sorry if you guys sent me a super chat and I didn't get it. That's embarrassing. I apologize, guys. I don't know what to say. It's not showing up on uh, on my Streamlabs or my YouTube. Um, Brendan McBride, I'll read your next chat, man. Let me know what you had to say. I apologize. Um. All right, so let me go ahead and finish what I was talking about here with you know looking at like Neo. Neo was a big hype sort of 2016 coin. Maybe you could make comparables to uh, what's going on here with you know the 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 DeFi coins, right? Um, Ori news canceled private sale interoperable at other chains. Yeah, I've been a fan of Ori covering it for a while now. It's it's really solid. Uh, though I missed my super micro cap entry, so I'll check back up on it in a second. Thanks for that uh, super chat. So look, Neo came in really hyped, and they had their rebrand here, and they pumped up to fifty five cents. Um, look, this was in you know this early pump here. The earliest price action we have here is September. So maybe like think about this as like the end of August. We actually had a a little mini altcoin crash in September of 2016. We had an altcoin crash in September of 2020. Um, and then we have, you know, maybe this is an, a, a good equivalent to a polka dot project, right? Because Neo was a, an Ethereum killer, or that's what they branded around. And so it took until, it took until for it to get over that 55 cents uh, price. Can we get this highlighter off? Okay, it took until May. Remember when we said goodbye to Bitcoin's prior price action, its prior all-time high of $20,000. That's our current all-time high. It was $1,100 before. Remember, it took until April, May, and then we get NEO popping off to $1.66, and then we get it popping off to $11, and then we get the big pump up to $47, and we all know how this ended up. It ended up pumping up to $200, right? But it was under a dollar for a very long time and even went as low as 10 cents or so here, right? So when you think about like maybe a, a polka dot project or something that's like equivalent to it, to like a Neo, which was like a, a, a sexy new type of technology in the space, um, and then you get a, a fading off in late 2016, I think this is a great comparable to what we're seeing here on the 2020 charts, which is in August, we had this mania phase, but it died pretty quickly. And once we get new price discovery from Bitcoin, not just tickling or breaking that all-time high, but confidently, confidently smashing through to newer and higher highs, the NEOs, right? Which this time around, it will probably be polka dot projects, maybe even if the time, if it's ready for Guggen and all that stuff, maybe even Cardano projects, who am I to say? Maybe it's the DeFi projects. The hot narratives of this bull run are going to really make moves as Bitcoin confidently leaves behind the $20,000 level and makes incremental price appreciation. And so that's kind of the message here is that we can look at Bitcoin um, as some as somewhat somewhat of a barometer of when we're going to get these super, you know, I made a, a video called God tier coins, right? The God tier coins. Uh, and that's my way of just sort of using uh, 
being a little bit like, all right, what? how can I explain the, the coins that are really kind of, even if their price action isn't for immediate quick flips, the fundamentals are just super strong, right? And I put in coins like Ocean, right? And coins like Kusama, um, coins that are just like really fundamentally strong. But look, we have, you know, let's just say by Q2, we should be seeing parabolic price action if 2021 is anything like 20. 16. Then we should be seeing stuff by 20 uh, by Q2, sort of late April, early May. If we are seeing things like in Bitcoin, remember I predicted that we'd be making a new all-time high at some point in January. Uh, that's because we're about a month ahead of schedule from the last time where we just came short of the all-time high here um, in 2017 and then uh, fell down. And this is the moment I'm making the correlation to, this sort of late February moment. I'm saying if we have this late February moment where we actually start closing candles above the all-time high, that's the moment we can have our first break to new all-time high. And then we have another month or so, month or two later, we get the, the firm saying goodbye to these price levels forever. So that's the goal, right? Is to see a, uh, a winning tug of war between Bitcoin and its prior all-time high. And once we start seeing that, it's time to buckle up because that new liquidity, um, and you see here that as Bitcoin really confidently leaves behind the prior all-time high, we see a doubling pretty quickly, right? We make it to 2K by, you know, within May, we're in 2K from 11 or, or 2200, right? If you want a full double. Within May, we've done a full 100% growth. So the correlation would be maybe we're at, you know, above 30,000, maybe we're pushing towards $40,000 once we do do this, once we do do in, uh, in sort of Q2 of next year. And so if this stuff happens and we start getting some parabolic movement, that new liquidity is going to start pumping alts to those kind of, you know, storybook levels. But we need Bitcoin to make its move first. And if history is a guide, it's looking like Q2 will be when things get really fun, though we can start seeing some really nice action here in Q1. Um, I'm going to hop back into the, the chat here. Uh, $5 super chat. Elio, do you think it's possible to see a scenario where stock indexes crash again, even lower than March, and we still have a huge altcoin run? Um, so I think it's I think it's impossible that we see a huge stock market index crash without seeing a huge stimulus bill. And I think that we're in a place where the economy is not weak enough to to not be having and we can print our way out for another little while. Whether this is a permanent solution or not, I believe that we can print our way out for quite a while. And I think that the political will to be there will will kick in once the stock market collapses. I mean, look, all these uh, senators, those tight tight. Uh, t the, the ones that don't want to open up their pocketbook uh, on the Senate, they will uh, move once their retirement and the stock market comes into a, a place of vulnerability. Why haven't they wanted to write a check since the first one? Well, the stock market hasn't been crashing. It's been doing really well. Rubik Finance has a lot of features like Bondly is cross-chain coming from Polkadot and is live already, plus bottomed out around 600K market cap. Yeah, Rubik Finance is interesting. I talked with their team. Um, they were built by uh, this sort of external... Um, development company uh, called like Rock and Block or whatever, and we were speaking to them about some stuff. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting, but they don't have uh, the community is not nearly as strong as Bondly. Community is very important. What do I think of Balancer? I think it's great technology. I think they have a great uh, technology. Thanks for the super chat, uh, Arif. Thanks for the super chat, Brendan. Thanks for the super chat, Great Minds. What do you think of Balancer? Um, I think Balancer is is solid, right? It's just uh, Uniswap is the brand, uh, even though Balancer allows for a lot more functionality. And I think that, you know, over time, especially during this bull run, we'll see if Balancer can really differentiate and start uh, building a, a little bit of a stronger user base. Um, lol, he's got heavy ETH bags. They deny that ETH has competitors. I don't know if you're talking about me. I don't deny that ETH has competitors. It's just that ETH's competitors have really failed, failed spectacularly. So you can't disprove that at all. Have you looked into Luxo? I also know, by the way, guys, I have my own project coming. You guys know that. I've been talking with a lot of people about on-chain scaling for ETH, and there's some really big stuff coming for on-chain scaling for ETH. So get ready for that because L2 is not the only way. There is going to be L1 scaling mechanisms coming and coming sooner than you think. And so I would just strap in because there's going to be more news and more excitement. It doesn't have to take two years to get functional scaling uh, in a sooner, uh, on a sooner time horizon. Okay. I don't think I missed the, uh, all the super chats, but again, the network effect is there on Ethereum. The speculators are there on Ethereum. The developers are there on Ethereum. So if you're looking at the fundamental underpinnings of what creates a successful project, it's all there on Ethereum. 
Falcon Swap again. Um, I've actually been keeping close eye on Falcon Swap. Uh, and like I said, as soon as they are ready, as soon as they're ready to deploy, I will look into them and consider them again because it's, anon cause it's an anonymous project and there has been so much FUD. I had to stop covering it since my first coverage, but I've still kept looking at it and I still believe uh, that if they are to deliver, then it would be a very, very, very nice addition to the Uniswap ecosystem and it could become a very, very popular mechanism. However, again, I'm not pushing anything until I see the proof in the pudding, right? I want to see the proof in the pudding. I want to see it working. I want to see it saving fees. I want to see what those fees savings are. And then I can make an informed decision as to whether or not their product is uh, as valuable as they claim it will be. It's easy to claim your project is valuable. Um, so many spammers here. Chill out and let the dude reply. Thanks. Uh, I appreciate that, Ami. My G. Um, thoughts on Pi. Thanks and great channel. I appreciate you. Um, not sure which one that is. Harmony One and Unify, thoughts? Those are two projects in one, a little sandwich there. Uh, Harmony, I haven't heard. I've, I haven't heard from Harmony in so long. Uh, Matic for scaling. Now, Matic's also a really good L2 solution, but there is friction in getting people to L2. It is fundamentally a different chain. Though it is EVM compatible, there's a lot of things to like about Matic, um, but it's also not, there. there is friction. There is friction in getting people to layer two. That is just a fact. They don't share the same liquidity. They don't share the same um, uh, blocks. It, it, is, it is definitely one of those things where there's friction. Somebody says Bitcoin is pumping. Let's see if Bitcoin is pumping. Uh, it is pumping. Look at that. That's nice. That's nice to see Bitcoin up, tickling uh, nineteen thousand again. Of course, if you look at the you know seven day chart, it's still uh you know it's still a little bit topsy turvy. But again, you're seeing that these dips are just getting they're getting bought up. You know they're getting bought up, and that's an you know it's very indicative of institutional order flow. Um, to see these kinds of less violent movements on Bitcoin. You know this seventeen. This is the big violent move that we had. Not so violent. Not so violent when you compare it to uh, Bitcoin's past. What about band protocol? You think it will get over 10 or even higher? You know, band had its moment in the sun. It had its Pepsi moment, right? Where it was the Pepsi to Chainlink's uh, beautiful Coca-Cola. And I think that there's better tech now than band to make that uh, to make that run. Like I would be more excited to see API 3 go and try to push up for the second place than I would be to see band. And so, you know, um, I've talked with people who work with both projects and, you know, everybody sings Chainlink's praises. They're consummate professionals. They're working on a really high level. And if you're going to make a run at a multi-billion dollar behemoth of consummate professionals, then it's probably going to be, you know, someone with actually something novel or interesting or fundamentally strong. And API 3 is the one that I'm most excited about. Uh, though the smaller oracles have proven that there's still a fruitful uh, place for profits, you know, like the the Octos and the Ori's have made nice runs. Uh, we saw huge runs out of DOS and all that stuff. But I think just slapping a new oracle together, you know, Oracle has become quite democratized. People are bringing off-chain data on-chain in a lot of different ways now. It's built in at the protocol level for polka dot and so you got to come with more than just this is an oracle there's got to be some more differentiation there and that's why i like api3 and you know i don't know if band has that differentiation yet to, to i think it'll still be big it'll probably still make huge moves during alt season um, but if you're looking for things that are going to move more uh, more on a sooner time scale or, or more dramatically i'm looking for things that have a slight bit more differentiation than band has from chain link um, thoughts on Keeper from Andre Cronier. Thanks for the super chat. Uh, not quite sure about Keeper. It's a, doing a lot of uh, interesting sort of uh, decentralized task management for smart contracts. Um, it pumped, it, it was one of those that I just kind of stayed away from because it was, all this Andre Cronier stuff is a little too hyped for my liking, to be honest. Um, but it looks solid and Andre, again, is a genius. What he does, I, I have faith that he's going to bring success to a lot of ecosystems and I wish them all the best, uh, but I personally don't have myself a bag. Hey, Elio, have you checked out AKT? It's the world's first decentralized cloud. So it's not the world's first decentralized cloud, uh, but it is a great project. I actually am looking at AKT. I think it's an interesting project. Um, there's a lot of technical stuff that I want to look under the hood and get a sense of. Um, but it is definitely, uh, fundamentally, uh, I'm looking at what they're doing in their technology as sort of an interesting uh, scaling uh, technology for uh, for crypto, uh, they are kind of branded as like a non-crypto project, which is always something that I like to look at and understand um, and make sure that they understand uh, how to 
achieve success in crypto, not just outside of crypto. What do I think about Reflect Finance token? Yeah, RFI has been the, the DGEN play of the month, RFI. Uh, you know, you guys know I don't like to do here. Let me um, let me actually bring myself full frame here. Uh, you guys know I don't try to do tokenomics only projects. And that's not because they don't pump or that they, there's no upside to them. There is money to be made in tokenomics only projects. But for me, I know that tends to be historically very short lived. And so I don't want to give you guys something that's short-lived. I want to give you guys something that has interesting technology and can have some legs. I want to give you something that is going to be uh, potentially some tech that gets adopted here in the industry and has a life cycle uh, that gets into the higher sort of tier of coins and, and can be something that doesn't just isn't just a flash in the pan. And so while things like RFI are interesting, they, they, they are not things that I want to cover here on the channel. And I think you guys can find uh, coverage of coins like RFI uh, and coins like, you know, rebasers and other stuff like that in other places, right? Um, that's just not what I prefer to cover. But, you know, rebasers have been going crazy. And if you look, rebases went crazy right before August, right? They went uh, crazy right at the beginning of August. Like that's when Ampleforth had its big run. So maybe this is signaling that there's another big altcoin mania coming. And that's like an irresponsible mania. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but I don't, I don't have any RFI. I missed it. It was like a 27X. Congratulations, Congratulations to everyone that got in. Um, shout out to Daniel Chu. No questions, just a little love from your admin team. Thanks for all the free and great lessons. I appreciate you, Daniel. Uh, Daniel has been holding it down in uh, the Telegram group. If you guys aren't in the Telegram, you can join. It's for free. Uh, T.me slash Elio Trades Crypto. The link is in the description. And I appreciate you, Daniel, for uh, for the super chat. You definitely didn't have to do that. And I appreciate you also holding down in the Telegram. Um, another super chat, have I gone over Secret Network, uh, formerly known as Enigma? Uh, yeah, I haven't uh, looked into Secret Network in a while. I just think that maybe privacy will become a big deal if we get this big KYC crackdown. But until then, there's a fair amount of anonymity going on already in crypto. And I don't think people give uh, two hoots per se yet about privacy. It's more of a meme to me. And so uh, I don't cover privacy coins because I don't see the market forces on them yet. That could change. Uh, but I also see it going almost the other way um, with like more like decentralized identity becoming a thing and, and owning and controlling your identity uh, on chain uh, and going kind of the opposite of privacy of publicity, right? And so Secret Network seems to have great tech, don't get me wrong. Um, but, you know, I try to focus on things that I see uh, getting trendy and, and sort of pumping uh, with good tech and fundamentals. Thanks for the super chat, Shane. I'm going to get into some non-super chats. I don't want you guys to think I only respond to super chats here. Thoughts on Unitrade. Uh, Unitrade, I don't have any thoughts. I haven't looked at it in months. Um, it got kind of like copy. There's like a bunch of stuff. Uh, I think UNDB, uh, Unibots, uh, does this limit order stuff way better and with way less gas fees. So um, UNDB is sort of the go-to with uh, uh, the Uniswap limit order stuff. Elio, do you think Celsius and their token have a future or not? Thanks in advance. Um, wow, 1,400 of you guys, 1,357. If you guys could all smash the like button, I really appreciate it. Collectively, it would be a big help to me and the channel, truly. Um, what do I think about uh, Celsius? Yeah, I mean, they're already huge, multi-billion dollar projects. I think it's, our, it's not a future, it's a now, right? It's a now. Uh, but do I want to buy into billion dollar projects? Um, besides Bitcoin and Ethereum, maybe some Kusama, maybe some DOT, uh, maybe some Link. Um, no, not really, because I just, uh, I like to get into micros and small caps, uh, get, you know, a few X's, distribute those X's into long-term holds. And then that's where I might sort of distribute into something like a Celsius. Um, but Celsius is more like, I would say, uh, something that you'd want to use more than invest in. Um, but they've done really well. It's already at a billion dollar market cap. Well, I don't think it's got as much upside as the other projects that are lower. Uh, just a simple mathematics, right? Well, it's good, Elio. Hope all is well, family. Yeah, thank you, uh, Eric Santos. Hope all is well with you. Uh, could Anchor be the perfect entry for someone to become a validator? Well, that's why I like Anchor. I also like because they spin up nodes for all these blockchains. It's a very, very interesting project. Um, thoughts on Parachute uh, and Parsec. 
Parachute is interesting, but I haven't I haven't like followed up with Parachute in a while. During during like the August Mania, they got a nice pump, but I haven't looked at what they're up to these days. Uh, Parsec again, I really like the the token values. Don't seem to always reflect the quality of project that I think they are. Uh, they're providing tools for a lot of people, saving developers a lot of pain, and they're playing a long game. So my hope is that over time they'll become more popular. I actually implemented a Parsec bot um, because I'm doing all kinds of trade. I'm doing all kinds of uh, uh, lots, managing lots of wallets. And so I created a Parsec bot just so I can know if anyone ever sends me anything or whatever. I get a Telegram message whenever any of my wallets have any activity on them. I get a message and I'll get it like a text message. And so that's really interesting. And you can check them out on Parsec. It's super easy to set up uh, these types of messages. And so if you check out Parsec, I think it's Parsec.io, they have just really, really uh, great services they allow you to do. And you don't need to do any code or anything. You can just click, click and set up a, a simple uh, Telegram message. Any familiar with Telcoin? Uh, Roundhead3322 uh, says, any familiarity with Telcoin? I hold a moon bag, but not sure how good their tech is. Uh, Telcoin, I'm not familiar enough to tell you. I'm, I can't tell coin you about it. I'm sorry, but thank you for the super chat. Um, I heard the founder was one of the guys behind TrustSwap. Usually when you see founders move on, it's not a great sign for the original project. Kind of means they probably not, uh, they're probably not focusing on it. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll look into Telcoin. There is a, if, if I'm remembering correctly, it might not be a very positive review, but I'll, I'll check it out. Hey, Elio, su third super chat today. Please check out pylon.finance. Yeah, I've looked into pylon before. These are the guys that are building like solar farms, solar, solar panel farms, and then sharing profits with their uh, users as part of a yield generation, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, yeah, it sounds it sounds like there's a lot of moving pieces there that I'm not fully confident that they'll end up making something that's of true value there, but good for them. And I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate the third super chat. It's a lot of super chats. Thanks. Uh, have I heard about Travala Ava? Yeah, I have. Uh, the thing about Travala is uh, travel right now is not a thing, and also you know they essentially accept a lot of tokens that are not their own. So it's they they have a problem with really giving uh, Ava. Um, enough utility, I guess is the, the problem. Um, hey, Elio, have you checked out AKT? Oh, I already talked about this one. I already talked about that one. All right, back to the non-super chats. Um, Pylon is genius GPO mining rig. Okay, uh, maybe I'm not remembering the exact one that Pylon is, but Bondly yet to pump. No, Bondly pumped a lot, but you know, there's they're doing a lot too, so hopefully they keep pumping. Um, box mining is bullish on Kex. I don't know Kex. Did you know Bondly is burning 16 million tokens soon? I don't know that. I mean, they have uh, like a billion tokens, so that would be like 1.6%. I don't know what the effect of that would be. Um, thoughts on Idol? Yeah, Idol's been been going crazy. Um, I don't really, I haven't really looked too much into it. Guys, one of the other things that's been going on right now is I've been taking like seven hours a day of meetings. Uh, for my own project, which obviously, as you guys know, I'm very excited to reveal to you. Things are heating up and starting to move very fast. Um, but it's just <laughs> like there's no time in the day. There's no time in the day. Uh, so some of these projects I just haven't been able to look into. Um, so idle is the best place for your money. Best yield, risk adjusted coming soon. Uh, more strategies. So yeah, there's a lot of this yield generation stuff. You know, there's a lot of the yield generation stuff. There's so many yield generators and optimize yield generators and we'll get you the best yield generators and set it and forget it yield generation. The real question is, um, are the tokens that underlie these platforms something that you need to get? Or should you just be finding yield through them? And so there's a lot of different, uh, there's a lot of different approaches to this. And I think the jury's still out. I think the jury's still out. And for that reason, um, like I don't claim to know everything, guys. I just don't. I don't, and then there's no possibility for me to know everything. However, when I don't know something, I don't talk about it. And I will not miss, I will not catch all the trains, but I try to confidently support the trains that I think are going in the right direction. I think that that's the, uh, what I try to do, right? And so something like, uh, like Idle Finance looks solid, looks solid, but again, I think that this yield farming thing has been democratized. It's kind of like banking, right? Yield farming is going to be a very, very common uh, offering, yield farming. 
So uh, what separates this yield firm from the others? How are they generating yields that the others aren't? If they're doing something that's you know, not sort of patent protected and, and private, then it's hard to think that they'll kind of maintain that, that uniqueness for too long. Um, where is, somebody said polls. Yeah, we talked about polls earlier. Um, my opt what else? Monero, Monero, yeah, yeah. We talked about privacy. Is Hedgic a thousand X coin? Could be, could be. I'm, I'm big on derivatives. Uh, thoughts on Trust Swap? Like I said, I wanted them to focus on their launch pad. Their last two projects, uh, Albit, uh, Freeway Token, and Coin, have both been very solid. And so if they, if they bring the best projects, then they'll have a future there. Can smart credit exceed Celsius? Um, that's definitely an interesting question. Uh, I think anything could happen. But it's probably unlikely, given that smart credit is like a $1 million coin and Celsius is like a $1 billion coin. So it's already got a 1,000x lead. Usually those types of ratios don't reverse. Um, have you looked into Noya? Uh, I have. I wasn't fully convinced of their solution, but they have the Oracle partnership, which is cool. Um, wow, the chat is rolling. Um, Oasis Network, Horizon, DuckDAO, Dime, XRP, <laughs> so many coins. Uh yeah, uh, so the DuckDAO I don't own. Um, they're kind of like a pre-sale group, um, and you know they did they did they did like base and stuff. But again, I don't touch like the rebasers. I wish everyone luck. I hope you guys have a ton of luck. Um, but I, I I don't have any opinion on on the token. Um, Nimic, no opinion on the token. Um, I you know they they have interesting tech, but it's. I'm looking for sort of, I hope you guys see with, with my mind, I look for reasons why I know the market will adopt certain pieces of technology. And that's sort of why I um, why I look at coins. Yeah, Terra Virtua, I covered on my November coins list. Again, uh, when it launched, it got hit with a ton of sort of botted uh, purchasing. It was already up sort of 5x uh, or something or like a few x on, on the initial uh, pop. Uh, and I think it's been suffering since. Um, at any rate, their, their NFTs are interesting, and I think NFTs will be a big, interesting uh, move for next year. Um, yeah, we talked about F-Force. Thanks for the chat. We talked about F-Force uh, a while back. I'm not going to go back on it. Um, Fire NFT, uh, do, you plan, do they plan to have you in their suite? I don't even know what that means. Um, ADA or VeChain? Yeah, I don't know. Both are, both are kind of like the slow-moving big projects with huge supplies. We'll see. Um, Dash is actually becoming huge in South America. Thoughts? Dash has been huge in South America. All right, guys. Uh, RSR is on my God's coin list. Uh, do I hold band? No, I took profits. Uh, do you think that ALBT will be able to deliver what they're offering? Well, I hope so. I hope so. Um, you know, I talked with the team several times, uh, and they're competent, but it's a big mission, right? I mean, unlocking hundred trillion dollars, right? That's obviously gonna be worth a lot of money. Bridging traditional finance into DeFi, that's gonna be worth a lot of money. The question is, are banks just gonna do that? Are they gonna keep a monopoly, keep it close to the vest? Is it gonna be really hard? But I think that, you know, they have a, a nice a nice plan. So hopefully, uh, hopefully they do. Thoughts on dent? <laughs> no thoughts on dent. Um, have I checked out Zora or Zoracles, private oracles? Uh, yeah, I'll look into Zoracles again, guys. Remember what I said is, is uh, you know, in the Oracle space, the, the really micros are interesting, uh, get little bags of them just in case, um, but the space is becoming really crowded and it's becoming really common and it's not August, right? It's not August anymore. It's always important to update your mindset as to how you approach these alts. Uh, and I don't think that these Oracles will be just the same, hey, I'm an Oracle pump pump 10x, right? I think that API 3 is the first sort of new Oracle that I've seen that's really differentiated, and that's why I like it. All right, guys, um, bump those speakers, homie. I will do. Just want to say a big thank you to you guys. I've been, it's been absolutely crazy here on the channel. The amount of uh, viewers, the amount of support, uh, just how really amazing the community has been growing. 
I really appreciate you guys uh, coming in supporting. I hope that this content helps you guys get ahead of this market. I hope that I'm able to constantly iterate and show you how you know I'm approaching things and keep you informed and a step ahead of the game. And if this content has been valuable, if you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. It's a free and easy way to support the channel. If you guys aren't already subscribed, we're 101,000 subscribers strong. It's mind bending to say that. I appreciate that. And if you guys aren't already subscribed, please hit that red sub button and click that little bell notification. Uh, and you'll be made aware whenever I put out new content, the coins we've been covering have been doing some pretty parabolic growth. I feel like I am you know, pretty, pretty well acquainted with what's going to happen here for certain coins. Again, I don't catch all the trains. You can't possibly um, but the coins that I've been focusing on have been performing pretty well, and that makes me happy. So if you guys want to know about those coins that I'm interested in, that I think have potential upside, then all you have to do is subscribe and put that bell notification on. As usual, I don't have VIPs. I don't have paid groups. I don't. I really don't even have a research team. I just make everything myself, and I keep it all inside so that the first people in the world to know which coins I like are you guys. It's my subscribers. So you know, I try to keep that relationship and make sure that this channel is the, the best source of information for my community. And in doing so, I hope that this subscription on YouTube and that bell notification pays dividends. Uh, with that said, uh, if you guys want to connect with me personally, feel free to join my Telegram group or follow me on Twitter. Really amazing communities there. The links are in the description. Uh, as always, I thank you so much for watching. My